Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and welcome to the DynamoDB follow along. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a table, load it up with data, uh, write some records, delete some records, get some uh, records in batch, and just really understand how DynamoDB works. Uh, what I'll need you to do is get DynamoDB open up here in a tab. So I just type in DynamoDB, click that there, and you will make it to the DynamoDB page. Make sure you're in uh, US East 1. Adibus loves to put you in Ohio or somewhere else. And just to be consistent, uh, let's always do US East 1 for uh, these follow-alongs. You're going to need a Cloud9 environment uh, set up here. I showed you some Elastic Beanstalk follow-along. I show you this in a variety of different ones here. So uh, if you're not sure how to do it, go check those out or give it a go and try to spin up uh, yourself an environment. And I have the DynamoDB documentation open up here. So we can uh, poke through this as we're working through these commands. And we're also going to need a couple files from the, um, the GitHub repo here, the free AWS Developer Associate. So I have a file here that helps transform data and then the actual data we plan on importing. And we're going to be working with Starship data from Star Trek. So I have a list of Starships and we can see that this is the data we have and that's what we're going to be importing. So let's make our way over to DynamoDB. And let's take a look at what it takes to create a table. We're not going to create our table through here. We're going to use the CLI. Um, but let's just talk through what's on the page here. So the first thing you do is you name your table. So I'd call mine Starships. And then you set your primary key. We have the option of setting a partition key and a sort key. AWS used to call this a hash and a range. And this will show up in the code because they're still named that that way. Um, so looking at our data, what we'd have to do is decide what would be make a good partition and sort key. And in this case, the good partition key is going to be ship class because it's a grouping of things. You can see you have cross field, cross field, cross field. And then um, as long as you as long as uh, you have a unique value with both the sort and partition, it's okay. And for the sort, we're using a registry number that identifies the ship, and those are all unique. So um, these this will definitely be a unique value. Generally, you want your sort key to be a, a date, but it all depends on your data. And in this case, we don't have a date value. Uh, so it's going to be ship class as our primary or our partition, sorry, and our registry as our sort key. So what we do here is we type in the name, uh, I would call it ship class. For some reason, um, DynamoDB likes to name things uh, camel case, or at least all the documentation out there. So let's just follow suit there. But you could uh, name them lowercase if you wanted to. And this would be registry. And over here, we have some data type string binary number. DynamoDB does not have a date time format. Uh, we would normally use string in that case. And there might be a few other ones outside of here, but these are, the, these are the only ones you need to know. S stands for string, B is for binary, N is for number. And these are both going to be string values. You have some uh, default values here, no secondary indexes, provision, capacity, five, five reads and five writes. It has um, auto scaling turned on and encryption is, at rest is default encryption type. So if we just check box that off. We can see those values here, five and five provisioned, auto scaling is turned on and this is defaulted. Uh, if you want to create a local secondary index, the only time you can create it is at, at this particular time. So you'd have to go ahead here and add those. Um, and for local tables, you always want to have the same, um, you always want to have the same partition key, and then you'd have a different sort key, and you have to specify them both. We don't have another value here, but I put a name, and now I can checkbox on secondary, uh, local secondary index. We're not going to create any uh, secondary indexes. They're not that important to know, uh, other than like how they work, uh, but we don't really need to go through the motions of actually using them. Uh, but this is what we're going to do, but we're going to use the CLI to do this. So making our way back to Cloud9, I'm going to create a, a new folder here called MK, or we'll type in MKDR to make that folder. And I'm going to type in DynamoDB. DynamoDB, um, we'll call it Playground. And any files we're working with, we'll place them in there. And I already named that wrong, so I'm going to go ahead here and just rename that file. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and make a new file in here. And I'm just going to call it like Scratchpad because this is where we're going to write out all our CLI commands and then paste them in there just so that it's a bit easier to work with. I'm just going to clear that there. Uh, yeah, and so let's get to it.